what is your setup looking like right now i'm literally in a conference room here in the second floor at the hotel um and there, it's literally like i'm the professor i'm sitting at the front and there are a bunch of tables with like chairs lined up so uh, it's it's like literally there could be like 20 people in here watching my stream but instead there are 11,000 people at home watching so it's all good um show us <laughs> show us okay you guys want to see it sure there you go there you go there you go <laughs> there you go there's even the projector which i think you guys saw like I, I i can hold hold it up here you guys see the projector the big projector but anyway all right um of course now i'm gonna lose like 10 seconds but not not like anybody actually cares okay let's play g3 Okay, I'm going to keep playing just modern setups, just D3. Okay, goes G6. Okay, I'm going to play this Bishop D2, Queen C1. With Bishop H6 tricks, Knight C3 tricks. This is a setup that I learned during my days in uh, in Vancouver. This was played a lot by Duncan Suttle, a, uh, a GM from Canada. He he used to play this a lot, so I'm just trying to emulate him here. Yasser Sarawan, another strong GM from the Pacific Northwest, also played this quite a bit. Of course, everyone knows who Yasser is. Um, he goes d4 now. I could play knight e4 here, which looks completely fine just to trade pieces. Got good bishops here. I mean, knight f3 is also a c3 is a move. Um, I could also just play h4 maybe. I could also drop back. Okay, what do I want to do here? This is a big question. I could also play c3 or c4. Um, I think I'm going to go c4 here. See if he plays n peasant. He does. Okay, I take. Because now I can also go rook b1. I mean, I don't know if my position is great, but it feels somewhat decent. Yasser, the famous card protector, exactly. Um, let's go here and trade off the bishops, of course. And now I have this nice wooden shield in the middle of the board as well. Thanks so much to X Swoo for the 26 month resub. Thanks so much to X Swoo. So I'm liking my position here. Very, very flexible, too. Of course, I should trade. Uh, c4 is a move i could also take and play c4 as well which is maybe a playable line i don't love it um but i think just c4 right away is completely fine so knight d4 i can just kick or go knight f3 i have queen b2 maximum pressure here seems relatively decent actually eh, maybe not whoa do I, is knight f3 blundering some queen a5 trick almost actually i gotta be a little bit careful here i just realized Go here, put pressure on the diagonal. I think I've misplayed this a little bit. This stream is actually pre-recorded ad for chess.com. No one tell Twitch though, okay? Funny. Okay, now he checks, but I thought here I could just sidestep. There's no bishop h3. I can play knight f3 or rook b1. I'll go here and trade the queens. Queen C3 is also maybe an idea as well, but okay, who cares? Oh, whoa. F5. Now, that's... um, That looks kind of wrong for some reason. I don't know why it looks wrong, but it looks wrong. Wait a second. Queen A1... So it takes, I just take an IV3 to win the game. Oh, but he can also move the queen to c7 or something. Okay, sacks. Which I kind of realized this was an idea, and I probably should not have allowed this, but... Alright, let's take. I'm going to go king g2, I guess. It was b6. Okay, so now I think I should be better after king g2 and e3. Just feels like I should be better here. Get rid of this knight. Now I get knight f3. I have queen b2. I mean, this should just be close to winning. Okay, let's go check. I have e5. I even have f4 here. Or just knight f3 and rook d1. Just there. Um, Don't want to play e5. I think I'm just going to go here and attack the bishop. There's b5, I expected that. Now, oh wait, I want to go knight f3 and maybe knight g5 or something. I have to be careful because there is rook f8, which I overlooked. Assume I go here and I have f4. 
There's no b4 because I just take the bishop. And if, once I get f4 and rook d1, I assume I'm better. Of course he finds this, so now I have to go rook c1. I've misplayed this quite a bit. Maybe just queen e1 or something? Still very tricky, but this I think is a blunder. If I can take and I have 96 and check and take. Yeah, this should be winning now for me. Yeah, now my, my queen should be getting in with queen a5. And yeah, we're going to get another win, you guys. We're going to get another big, big win. We're going to move to six points out of seven now, I believe. And knight f7. I mean, I can take c5, but I assume... Taking c5 should be correct to hit the pawn. Uh, the only question is which square do I go to? Um... I'm going to go to f1. Because now I can just take and push p also. This should just be very straightforward. It goes rook c2. If I take, he has some knight g5 trickery, but... I don't actually care. Let's go check, and then e6, I assume. So I have check, and I have e7. I don't think he can stop it. Yeah, it should be winning. Because knight f3, there's queen f8. Yeah, we're going to get the win. There we go. Now, if I want to be funny, I could take, but I think I just check and go e7. I mean, it's check, but then king e2, c2, king d2 is gg. Triple pawns. Yeah, I have the tower of power here. Now, I guess I go... I mean, d1... Looks good enough. Check and king c1. Yeah, that's good enough. So I seem to be playing much better. Um, yeah, I seem to be playing better every game. Feels like. Okay, we got the win. We moved to six out of seven. Um, who Who's on six? We have Kovalev and Rude Makarian. I assume b4, b3. Ah, uh, there's h4, h5 actually. Tricky. Oh, but b4, h4, b3, there's queen, queen f4 check. He misses it. Okay, but now knight f4. Oh, wait, takes b4 here, b3. Not in time. Probably just b4, b3. Okay, king h6. b3, king d2, knight h4 maybe, or knight h4 right away. Both are playable. Are the pl players in the same hotel? Yes, you guys, we are. So Fabiano, I don't know if he's actually live streaming on YouTube or not. B3? Oh. What was that? Okay. Probably D4. Uh. B3, B2? Okay, now, yeah, now I think Kovalev's going to save the game. Because you can go here in D4. Or this. This is also good enough. Kovalev bamboozled Fabiano into blundering a free rook for nothing. Uh-huh. Okay. Should be a draw. You get the bishop behind the pawn. Bishop D. Oh, wait. No, you can't actually. It hangs a bishop. Takes. Takes. And bishop f6. Yeah, bishop f6. And this will be a draw. So, um... He's live on YouTube. Okay, so yeah, all the players are the same hotel, just to be clear. We're all at the same hotel, um, and that's that's that. So, yeah. Did I pay big bucks for the room? No, I didn't pay big bucks for the room. I'm just using a conference room. No. Kovalev was a great hockey player. I agree. Um, yeah, you got to be careful not to get the bishop stuck on the wrong side here. Like, maybe knight 92 and king d3. Yeah, so this should be a draw in a second. You go this way, yep. As long as you don't get the bishop trapped where you can push the pawn.
Game's still going, but of course this will be drawn pretty soon. They're just playing on. They're, they're just playing on here. Knight e4? Okay. Knight b5 and knight c3. One last trick. Knight b5 and knight c3. One last trick. Yeah, now you make sure you don't get blocked in. And yeah. All right, what else do we have? So let's take a look at the standings. So we have Bogdan, Diak, and Polish Rider on six and a half. We're going to have a couple other guys on six and a half, but we're only going to be half a point out of first place as we head into the final stretch, which is very, very good, all things considered. Hey, chat, long time, no see. Uh, yeah, who's in the lead in Norway? Fabiano is leading by two points right now over me. So Fabiano is, is doing quite well. Yeah, he's, he's having a good event. It's great. It's great to see. So anyway, anyway. So, all right. Waiting for round number eight. We should be starting in a second, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. California. Who am I playing against? I don't know. My next game should be starting momentarily. Yeah. Norway term is more fun event than a real thing. I'm just going to keep playing G3. Why not? It's been working so far. I mean, live by the sword, die by the sword, as they like to say. So let's play G3, but G2. How did I do today? I um I drew my classical game against Shakur and Mamadi Arv, and I won the Armageddon with the white piece. It's a very choppy game. Play Knight C3. I don't even know if it's a good move, but I'll play it. And probably I'll play like Bishop G5 or maybe Knight F3. He goes D4, which is interesting. I'm just going to play Knight B1 and probably C3 here. And then Knight F3. We'll see what he does. I can't tell. Is he actually going to play Bishop H3? Is he going to castle? What's going on here? Also, I'm way up on time, which is good, too. He goes 97. So I can play Knight B3 if I want to, and I think I should actually hit the pawn. I don't know if I like knight b3 objective. It's probably not the right square, actually, as I look at the position. Yeah, I have a feeling it's not the right square at all, but... Um, at this point, I kind of don't have a choice. Now I kind of have to just go for it with bishop d2 and, like, queen c2 and rook c1. I don't really love my position here, but it's playable at least. Both of us have weird placing placed pieces, by the way. Like, his knight on g6 is weird. My knight on b3 is weird. I don't know if I take with a bishop or not. Somehow it feels correct, though, uh, to take and play, like, queen c2 and rook c1 and play as, like, a Sicilian. Yeah, I expected that. Now, I can obviously trade. I think I'm going to trade and go queen c2. And maybe I'm just going to castle queen side here, maybe. Maybe there's even knight a5. I mean, it just feels... It feels like an interesting position. I, I, I like the position, conceptually. I know it's actually good, but it feels like it's a reasonable setup. I also have d4 here as well to strike hard, strike first in the center. Let's see what he's going to do. So he castles right into knight a5. Now, I can obviously castle here. I don't know if castles is right or not, but I'm just going to play king b1, rook c1, and try to attack on the c file. I think it makes the most sense here. I also have d4 somewhere as well. So I'm way up on clock. That's the good news. There's really no bad news here other than the position's probably not better right now. It's probably about equal. But that's the only downside. So it's it's all very, very good. There's queen e6. I expected that. d4 is... I'm just going to go king b1 or rook c1. And then maybe knight fd2. Maybe knight c4. Okay, now, I do want to go knight a5. I can also play knight d2 and knight c4, maybe. Yeah, I think I just go here, queen a4, knight c4. I really like my position here. Yeah, I expected that. Now, do I go knight c4? Do I play queen a4? e4 is always an option. I don't really like it. How do I do this? Don't... I feel like knight d2 is somehow a mistake by me. It doesn't... I think it was a mistake. Hmm. 
guess I'll go knight e4 to hit the bishop. I don't really like the way I played the position. Maybe bishop d2 and knight... Eh. Okay, I think rook d1 makes sense. Because at 5, I can always just take it. Knight d5, I expected that. I don't like the position objectively. I don't think I've played this very well, but... You know, I don't really have a choice here. I just kind of have to live with it. Queen a4, there's always knight b6. That's the problem. It goes h6, which I find quite interesting. So he really desperately wants to play f5, apparently. Okay, wait a second, wait a second. This doesn't look quite right to me. Not sure why, but it feels wrong. And I'm not sure how to explain it, but it just doesn't feel right. I guess I'll just go here, maybe. Because f5, I have knight c5, or takes an e4. Okay, it does it, so I'll take. Knight c5, I don't think was right, because takes, takes, e4 looked wrong. But now I have e4, I thought. So hit the knight. There's knight b6. So of course, I go here to hit the knight on b6. I think knight e7 and d5 was much better, but the show goes on. Okay, plays rook c8, so of course I can take. Now I go queen a4, of course. He's getting low on time, but it's still very balanced, I think. Okay, goes rook f8. Which is probably a very good move that I actually kind of overlooked. Ah, oh, shoot. Did I just blunder here? I think I can go here and hold. It's queen g4, I have rook d3. I think taking was a mistake. He shouldn't have done that. Um... Oh, he's queen c8, which I also just completely missed as well. Ay, ay, ay. G4. Yeah, I completely overlooked this, and now it's very tricky. Um, so I can take, though. Okay, this is getting messy again. This is getting very messy. Time is tight. I have check and check and mate. If I check and play... Rook d8. I don't see it. I think he's getting mated in, in the corner. I think I got him. Yeah, let's go check. And check. Yes, I got him. There should be a mate here. Back in rook c8. GG, why not? King c6, rook c8. Good night. Game over. So we get another win. And we now move our way up to 7 out of 8. So we are really, really trying to press now, you guys. We're really pressing hard. Polish Fighter wins again to move to 7.5. Yeah, another big, big win. And this will be our next break coming up. So let's just wait a second. Let's see, let's see what happens here. Yeah, big, big dub. Big, big dub. So Kovalev is still playing on 6.5 out of 7. He's the only player who can get to like 7.5. And, and it looks like he's actually on the brink. Queen C2 b2 gg why not queen c1 bishop d5 yeah this is all over bishop d5 queen f3 mate yep all right so kovalev wins so he moves to seven and a half so two people on seven and a half and i am on seven thank you so much to sw three four three or three r43 for the prime thank you so much appreciate it. seven ads every 20 minutes crazy welcome to twitch you guys uh what, what do you want twitch needs to make money as we know can't keep losing money in, in the in the zero uh, in the non-zero uh, interest rate environment. What can we say? So, all right. So we, we are on seven out of eight um, as we keep moving into the home stretch. Jan Nepoman is playing against um, Indian Lad. It looks like he's winning. This should be winning. Just G five or wait, check <laughs> and take the queen. GG. Why not? So, yeah. So so um, what does that put? I think that puts um, Jan is on six and a half out of eight. 
I assume Fabiano also up there somewhere, or did Fabiano drop out? Actually, I don't see Fabiano. Fabi did Fabiano withdraw after the loss? Now, we get to play Moro. This is Luca Morani from Italy. Um, strong GM. Now, again, I've been playing G6, D6, so of course I'm not going to change the trend, and I will, I will keep playing the same opening. I'm playing with white, playing with black, playing with every color in between. Let's play A6 here. I'm going to play D6 this time. Something a little bit different. I'm going to go Bishop G4, and I think I'm going to play Knight C6 here, maybe like something a little bit wonky. Play E6. I mean, he always has H3 somewhere. Um... Go knight g7. Play d5 here. Can obviously trade if he wants to. He goes knight e5, so of course I will... Well, I have to trade the bishop, but I don't trade what am I doing. He goes queen takes. Now, I could play something like f5, which is kind of... It looks really silly, but is it actually bad? Or just... Maybe just queen d6. Takes, takes. It should be fine. I don't really like my position, by the way, but it's still still a position. Takes with the knight, which is very interesting. I guess I just take. This looks a little bit strange to me somehow. Okay, so he takes. So I guess he's just trying to draw the game here somehow or something. Um, I can take with the pawn maybe, but I, I think it's a sp suspect at best. It's going to go g4. I mean, I can also just take with the knight and, like, take and go queen e4. Oh, he plays king b1. I did not expect that. So, of course, I will castle. I should be okay here. He's probably going to go c3 to consolidate. I should not really be worse here because I have a great bishop on the diagonal. That doesn't mean I should be better either. But, uh, first of all, that hangs a pawn, which I think he just forgot about. That's a fairly serious mistake for my opponent. d5, I just eat the juicer, and then I go queen h3, queen f5. That's a big mistake. And now we're back in the driver's seat. Got a great bishop on g7, spying the pawn. He just hung g2. He just cleanly hung the pawn. And I think after this... Yeah, now I'm just going to go back to d5, take away c4. Probably plop a juicer on f5 at some point, And then try to stack the rooks on the d-file. Let's go here, take away rook g5. Yeah, this is looking very, very pleasant. Because I'm just going to go rook d6 and rook d8. Let's go here. Play rook d8, rook c6. I have queen f5 at some point. I also have b5, depending if I want to actually play it. But I kind of like just queen f5 here to, to spy the pawn. And down the road, I'm going to probably do something on this diagonal as well. So, it goes king c1, which looks very strange. Uh, I can play h5. I can also go g5. I can also play rook d7. I don't really want to play king b8. That's the one move I don't really want to play. So I think I'm just going to go h5. Why not? Okay, play c4. So if I go c5, I don't know if it's good. I, oh, do I have e5 here? Yeah, I think I do. So he takes, I have bishop g5. He takes, he loses the tower. And if d5, I just take, and I'm just up pawns, as they say. There's not time for queen a7. This should be winning. I'm up two pawns here. All I really need to do is basically get rid of this chain of four, and then I win the game. So c6 is definitely a move here. If bishop c5, rook d7, c6, bishop b6 could be annoying, so I don't really want to allow that. So if I don't want to allow that, I could also go b6. I can also go g5. So many options here. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go g5 and then rook d7. And if he goes h4, I get g4, f3. In fact, I'm already probably pushing p immediately anyway. Feels like this should just be winning for me unless I do something insane here. Yeah, see, now I just go g4 and f3 anyway, and I have rook g8, and... Yeah, I mean, the main problem here for white is that basically I'm just getting... There's just too much. Too much happening too fast. Pawns just guard each other very nicely here with rook g8. Um, can I do a bishop e5? I mean... Like, alright, if this is not a winning endgame, like... Um... 
I mean, if this is not a winning endgame, then I, I don't know what winning is in chess anymore. Let's go here, rookie two. I mean, it's hard to believe this isn't winning with all these past pawns connected. I mean, maybe it's not, but I'm up so much time here that, I mean, I just I find it hard to believe. Um, if I check and go there, I think I'm going to go check and rook here. And then rookie three, and then rook b2, and this has to be winning somehow. If I play rookie three, takes a five, takes, takes. The five. Hmm. I can also play rookie four. Actually, what, what about rookie four? Or wait, did I? Wait, no, I didn't blunder. I thought for a second I might have just blundered. I guess I go here in Rook B1. I feel like I'm slightly misplaying this, but... I take... I mean, I also have H4, which I assume just wins. Yeah, I think H4, G3, F2 should just be winning on the spot. So if takes, I have Rook E7 and King C7. If I take, he goes Rook D7, but even Rook E7 wins. Yeah, I just take. And I go here, and with the three juicers, I just win the game. There we go. Yeah, I just push P. Can't stop all of them. We got the win. Eighth win in a row. We're now on eight points out of nine, you guys. So eight points out of nine as we head into the home stretch. Let's watch the dude who is playing against somebody. Let's watch the dude. The dude is on seven and a half. He's playing Kovalev. The dude is down a queen for a rook, but he's got a lot of pawns here. Very tricky position here. Great job, sir. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I still assume that um, Kovlev will win this somehow. I mean, Bishop D8, Bishop E7 is the only way to play this. Dudas calculating this at this long line with Bishop takes E5. Finally, he rejects it. Um, hard to judge. Very hard to judge. You are a legend. I'm doing what I can. Yeah, yeah. Now Bishop E7, and now it's getting scary suddenly. Check king eight king here. A4. Okay. Queen A4. Probably gonna be a draw, by the way. Queen E4. Okay, do not takes, which I'm a little I guess rook c5 is good enough. Queen c2. A4 or gotta move queen d3. Do not might win this game, by the way. Um, queen d4. I guess it's going to be a draw still. Yeah, queen d4. f3. Just move. Check. Probably a3 somewhere is good. Like, I would go a3 somewhere in here. a3. Uh... Check, maybe? Check. Check. Check and check. I mean, this should be a draw. Check. Yeah, it's going to be a draw now. Dude, I can't avoid it. Check, check. Yeah. Just check and, yeah, draw. Okay, so that game's a draw. So now this means that going to round number 10, I am now tied for the lead after eight wins in a row. We're now tied for the lead with two other players, Kovalev and Polish Fighter. Thank you to MPGM for the eight months. Thank you to MPGM. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, you guys. So we're in the hunt. We're in the big, big hunt here trying to uh, trying to take it down. We're tied for the lead after all, after all that. We're doing what we can. If only the first game was a win as well, eh, easy, easier said than done. But yeah, we now have eight points out of nine. Final two rounds coming up here, you guys. Final two. Final two rounds. Do I use the words like juicer in your head when calculating a serious turns? I can. I can also not. I mean, it just depends what the mood is. So looking good, feeling great. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good, actually. I mean, 
you know it didn't get off to a good start round one was not very good but yeah the ad situation is so much better on twitch now they must have made their money now i, I don't know what that means but anyway um yeah so all right still a few games going round number um round number round number nine Tomorrow is a rest day. Yes, you guys. Tomorrow will be a rest day. So, two games remaining in round number nine. Um, what? He didn't... I guess... A five? I'm so confused, but... Rook H5? I'm a little confused by this game. I'm going to be honest. But anyway, it is. Yeah. Uh, if, if it wasn't, I was going to scold you for staying up so late. Even if I had a game tomorrow, I still would consider playing Title Tuesday anyway. Because as I said, this is my main job. Okay, I'm going to keep going with G3 and D3. It's been working. You got to li live by the sword, die by the sword. I'm just going to keep playing G3 and D3 every game. Because if it's not good enough, it's just not good enough. And that's just life. So, all right. Uh, let's go Bishop G2 here. Play d3. Keep it simple. Probably knight d2 and e4 again. Depends if he takes the center or he does, and he does. Okay, so I'll go here. Play e4. Knight c3 and bishop g5 was also maybe an idea, but whatever. Who cares? Let's play e4. Knight f3, of course. We're gonna castle. We'll see what he does. He can play c6. He can play a5, b6, maybe, but very standard, very slow position here. Um, okay, I'll go h3 here. Could have just castled right away. I don't know why I didn't just castle, but... Okay, let's go queen e2. Probably play rook d1. Maybe knight c4. I'm already very happy with my position, by the way. Very happy, because knight c4 is very nice. A little bit suspicious from Kovalev here. Definitely a little bit suspicious the way he's played this opening. And the fact that he's now thinking tells me that he realizes that knight c4 is incoming. And I'm just trying to get the double bishops. That's it. I just want to get the bishop pair, and that's all I'm looking for. Your position is bad? Why, thank you. I appreciate it. That's that's always good to hear. Um, I can also go just b3 here and bishop b2 to fianchito the bishop. And now b3 supports knight c4, so queen b5 is not a big threat. I'm going knight c4 almost for sure next move. Um... And then he's gonna have problems dealing with the pawn on e5 here. So it's all it's all pretty good actually. I'm pretty happy with my position. I guess I should pre-move this in case he takes. I mean, I don't really know if he will, but it's worth the pre-move at the very least. Party. Let's go here. Trade off the, the knight for the bishop. Again, I, my position's not out of this world good, but it's I should have a small advantage due to the due to the bees, just like in my game against Arian Tari. So while it's not the dream, I still think that it's a pretty pleasant position. I mean, Rook B one is reason. Uh, does he still have Bishop A three? He might have Bishop. A I could take maybe, which is kind of interesting. Oh, I also have Knight H four maybe, which I kind of like too. Oh, uh, this blunder is Knight G six. No. Uh, Forktown, USA. I think Kovalev missed that. Hey, how's it going, GM Candy? Thanks for GM Candy for 29 months. Say hi from Istanbul for the Prime. Yeah, he just missed Knight G6 in the pin, pin plays, and he's going to lose some materials here. Okay, so I can obviously... Do I trade the Queens or do I trade the Bishops? It's an interesting question. My gut says that I should just trade the Queens, probably. Yeah, I think trading the queens is right here. Let's go c3, and now I have b4 here. No a3 funkiness, because I just drop back and play b4, and this is kind of going the wrong way for, for Kovalev here. Once I get b4 and a3, I probably just win the game, actually. So it's looking very, very good. I also have the bishop pair, which doesn't help matters here for him. Um, can play b4 if I want. I mean, b4 and rook d1 looks good, but I think rook d1 is also just... A very good move here. Take the open lane. He can still play A3 and then B4, but... I mean, I really shouldn't be worried. Yeah, he's going to go B4. I'll go here, take. I mean, position looks very, very pleasant for me. I 
54. Uh, I think I just take, no? And then E5, classic fossil. GG, why not? We're going to get another win, you guys. Let's go here, hit the knight. Yeah. He's going to go rookie two, so he's hoping for some miracles. I'll just take. I don't even have to, but... I mean, if I if I can't win this position, well then, the, I mean, really, what am I even playing chess for? Okay, so let's think for a second. Okay, so what's the standard way to play this? King f1 is fine. B4 looks correct, though. Still not trivial, though, actually, now that I look at the position. It's winning, but it's not trivial, actually. It's surprisingly not trivial, but I'm up so much time here that it seems almost impossible you can save this. But it's weirdly not trivial. Rook, okay, he goes king f6, but that must be a mistake. First of all, because I have bishop f1 and b5. Yeah, I think I just go here and then b5 and... Okay, now I can play bishop c4 here, which is fine. I can try to bring my king close as well. Let's think. But I, I have all the time in the world here, so that's really the only thing that matters. So I go here, takes, takes. Okay, 1, b6, d3, b7. b6, a2, d3, b7. Yeah, this should be winning. So I can just take. He can't stop all the pawns. I go... Oh, no, did I just blunder? Wait a second. Did I just actually blunder? Oh, shoot. No, I, I didn't blunder. I have king g2. Yeah, I almost blundered b... Yeah, I almost blundered there. Okay, wait. But now I go here on b7. That was way too close for comfort. I almost just blundered this game away. Yeah, now I just go bishop c4. I take the juice from the rest is easy. <clears throat> Yeah, it resigns. Okay, we got the win. Big, big dub, and we now move to nine points out of ten. We've now won nine games in a row, you guys. So we are really surging here. Um, all the other games are over. Jan won his game to get to eight and a half against somebody. Or actually, wait, no, there are other people who can get to eight and a half. We have Dayak and others. But Jan continues to surge as well up the leaderboard. So he's on eight and a half out of nine here. I could play anybody on this list. I, I could play Nepo. I could play Rude. Rude won with black, and I was white so rude mccarrion is probably the player that i'm gonna play i'd much i mean uh, it depends what i want like playing nepo would be amazing but i don't think i'm gonna actually play him well let me check uh lhs is q right this is q nepo is black too so i guess i could play nepo i don't know i won't win with a draw because if the game is decisive it's not gonna be good enough i'm pretty sure nepo is a white guy very funny you guys very funny Okay, but I get Nepo in round nine. Okay. Um, but what do I do here? Do I follow the rhythm with G6 or do I play a Berlin? Maybe I want to make Nepo show some great prep. Oh, he played oh, he played F4. I was I was not expecting him to do that. That's Okay. Um, let's play F5 then. Yeah, I was not expecting him to play F4. He just I ah, completely caught me there. Okay, that's that's so unfortunate. Um, I'm trying to remember what the line is here. I'm gonna go knight f6. I don't think this is the correct line, by the way. I'm pretty sure it's takes and queen g5, but I don't want to waste time here. Let's go here, trade. Whoa, and Nepo sacks a piece. Whoa. Some kind of weird prep, or am I out of my mind? This might be some great prep from Napo that I just don't know. Probably this is prep. Um, okay, this is probably some great prep that I'm that I've fallen into. I wasn't gonna play knight c6 to begin with, but this is rather unfortunate. I so let's take and go here, maybe. I mean, I don't know if E6 is a move, but I, I, I actually just don't care. 
so annoying because I was so I was so ready for knight f3 that I just played knight c6, and that's ugh, not what I intended to do, but whatever. Let's take castles right. So now I assume I just if I take I lose, so I can't do it. So if I play a6, that's a move, but I assume castles is fine. I gotta move faster though. Way too slow here. Plays bishop e3, which it's not the move I expected somehow. Um, go here. Yeah, I gotta speed up though. I'm just too slow. I gotta I gotta pick up the speed here. Let's see what happens. Gotta pick up the speed. No, if I draw the game, it's not good enough. Oh, no, it is good enough because the bar and Rude McCarrion drew their game already. Of course, they drew, obviously. Um, okay, wait a second. Let's go. I feel like I should have something here somehow. Um, Yeah, they did draw their game. That's really annoying. That's really annoying now that I have this knight c6 slip. Go here. Queen h3 is also not a move I was expecting. Go here to hit the pawn. Maybe g6 is lurking. I just want to go g6 and take the pawn. Maybe I'm okay here. A good g6 takes takes rook g8 rook f6 rook f8 i think this is okay so i can take and take and i have rook it goes bishop f4 logical move Okay, that hangs upon. I could offer him a draw. But let's go back and try to win. Ah, oh, rook f5 is a nasty trick. I missed rook f5, rook c5 completely. Six G five, maybe. Got to just pick up the speed here. Got to master the tempo. I think I am better here, by the way. I have G five, H four, H three. Uh, I missed that. Shoot. I mean, it's probably just a draw after takes, but... I think I'm winning here, but I'm not sure. I'm thinking about the position here.
I think I'm just winning. Yeah, I win. There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. We get the win. Ten in a row. Ten in a row. Ten in a row. There we go. There we go. And again, you guys, that is why at the end of the day, as good as preparation is, you still got to play the game. Um, you still got to play the game. And of course, I was completely cooked like a goose, but I kept it together. We win 10 in a row, 10 in a row after round number one, and we get a big dub with 10 points out of 11. Title Tuesday is now over. And if we look at the late Title Tuesday, you will see that the winner of title Tuesday is none other than, of course, Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura, who goes a perfect 10 out of 10 after losing in round number one to win title Tuesday by one point clear ahead of JC Abar, Rude McCarran, and Rasmus Suvain. So we get the win, 10 out of 11. We do our sponsor portion of the stream. And on that note, you guys, I am not gonna run my outro. I think I'm just gonna call it a night. Um, and I'm gonna call it a night. It's getting a little bit late here. It's now about 1.15 a.m. in the morning.